Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint & Sip and this is Paint & Sip at Home. So today I'm in Nirha, Spain, which is in the region of Costa del Sol. I'm going to be painting this beautiful landscape that is a wonderful inspiration today. Um, and I'm going to be sipping on Malaga Dolce. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials that we're going to use today, we're going to be using a 16 by 20 stretched and prime canvas. Uh, you can get this at any of your local craft stores or you can get it online and you can certainly switch up the size. Uh, you're going to need a cup of water for washing your brushes. You're going to need some paper towel for drying your brushes. The brushes I'm going to be using today is a one inch wide bristle brush. I'm going to be using three round brushes, different sizes. I've got a uh, eight, six, and one. And these are just round synthetic brushes. I'm also going to be using a number two pencil to do my initial sketch. I'm using acrylic paint today. The colors I'm going to be using is titanium white, cobalt blue, raw umber, uh, green oxide, burnt sienna, chrome yellow, and Mars black. And of course you could switch up these colors as well, but these are going to be the ones that I'm using. And that's all you're going to need for your materials today. Alright, so for the first step what I'm going to be doing is doing an initial sketch to in essence block out or section off uh, the landscape. So I'm going to be sectioning off the sky, the land, and the water. And I'm only going to be using a portion of that land because I'm going to be doing this palm tree in the foreground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be um, doing a line about halfway down my canvas which is going to be my horizon line. So you're going to pick where you feel to be about the halfway mark. Maybe make a couple of marks. And just connect them. It doesn't have to be a perfect line at this point. Mine's a little bit tipped, so I'm just kind of straightening mine out a little bit here. And then I'm going to do my land. My land I'm going to have about halfway in the middle of my canvas here. And then I'm going to be bringing it. There's a couple of little um, hills there that I want to incorporate, so. Just kind of watching my landscape and doing a little bit of a, a sketch to section out these, these hills here. I'm not getting it perfect right now. This is just giving me an idea of where these different hills are. And that's in essence all I'm going to be doing for the sketch. So you can put your pencil down, you're going to get your large brush out and get ready for the next step. Alright, so what I'm doing for the first step is I'm going to be doing the sky. It's a little hazy out there today so I'm not going to do a big beautiful blue sky. I'm going to be doing a little bit more gray. So I'm going to be using mostly white. I'll use a little bit of blue, a little bit of brown and probably a little bit of black. But I'm going to start with blue and white on my brush. I'm going to be going left to right just to get this sky started off here. I'm going to continue adding white to my brush. As I come down here now I'm adding a little bit of brown and white. I'm doing it in these diagonal marks because I'm seeing diagonal kind of clouds forming in that sky. So this is just leading, leading our eyes in the same direction that the sky is right now. And you can certainly do more circles if you wanted, like if you wanted it to be a little bit puffier looking, you could do these circles, which I will be incorporating a little bit just so it's got a little bit more movement in it. But you can certainly, as you're doing this and you're watching your clouds, you can change the direction of the paint. It doesn't always have to go left to right. 
I'm going to be bringing this right down to my high, right down to the outline that I have. And typically, I'll hope the sky is going to get lighter and lighter as it comes down. So wherever you start up at the top, you want it to end a little bit lighter down at that bottom. And this paint is still wet, so I can certainly continue to work it as I am as it's drying. But I definitely, it's pretty overcast here, so, well, it's not overcast with rain clouds or anything, but it's got this haziness to it. So I'm going to incorporate just a touch of black as well. Um, this way I can get a little bit more direction in these clouds. And of course, I'm moving it as it's drying here, so that will give me some extra added dimension to it. And when you have a painting with a lot of sky in it, you really want to make that sky interesting. So even if it's not exactly as you're seeing it out there, adding extra elements to it or making it brighter or darker or having a little bit more dimension to it, it's going to make your painting more interesting as well. So again, I'm going right down to my outline. And you could always come back and do a second, a second layer on it. Um, I'm going to just kind of add some more before I finish here. And this way I'm not, I don't have to come back if I get it to a point where I like it. Um, you could if you wanted to add more dimension to it or if, if it ended up being a little bit flat on that first pass, you could certainly come back and add another layer to it. But I'm kind of happy with this. Just kind of look at it just a little bit more here. This is a little bit too blue for me right there, so I'm going to dull that down a little bit before I leave it. And again, doesn't have to be exactly as you're seeing it out there, but I am pretty happy with this, so I think I'm going to... I'm going to call it and I'm going to use this uh, big brush for the next step but I'll wash and dry it so you can do that and just get ready for the next step all right so what I'm doing for the second step is I'm blocking in a base color from my hills back here and in order for me to continue to see them as different hills I have to do them as different colors so when I look out there I'm seeing the one all the way to the right it's base colors pretty dark the middle one is a little bit lighter and more brown and then that one on the left predominantly is similar to the, the one on the right. So that's how I'm going to kind of tackle this. I'm going to use my big brush. I'm using uh, black, green, blue, and brown. And I'm just going to kind of dot this in so I have a base coat for, um, I'll be adding some extra details on top of it later. Um, but this is just going to give me a base coat, maybe a little bit of white because it's kind of hazy out there. And I'm using this bigger brush just so I can get the, the area on there, give it a little bit of texture. I'm going to use the same color combination for this one. And the reason why I'm using blue is to set these back in the distance. Um, whenever you look at a, a landscape that's far off in the distance, it will continue to have these like bluer hues to it because our eyes can't see certain colors, especially red. Um, so here I go, just kind of fi finishing this one up. And then this one I'll do a little bit more brown. Just to be a little bit darker. And I like to use multiple colors on my brush so that way it 
multiple colors happen on the canvas, especially in a landscape where it's tough to sit here and put all the little tiny details, especially on a quick beginner level painting like this, um, where you may not want to sit here and put all that little tiny detail. So this inherently will give you some nice little detail without even trying. So now for this middle one, I'm not going to be using as much um, of the darker colors, but I am definitely going to use like brown, rust, yellow, and maybe a little bit of white. I didn't wash my brush, um, so that way those colors from the other hills will also be incorporated. And this is just a base coat. It's not meant to um, have much detail in it at this point. It's just meant to give us a base coat. So when we do go to do the detail, we've got the right shade underneath it, or the right hue. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wash and dry my big brush, because I'm gonna use it for the next step. So you can do that and get ready. So the next step that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be painting the water. I'm gonna be using white, blue, brown, and green. Um, I'm going to have it lighter up at the top by the horizon and it's going to get darker down towards me or more prominent, like more vibrant down towards me. So I have white on my brush right now. I'm going to go in for a little bit of blue, a little bit of brown. And I'm just going to kind of start this in through here. I need this to look different than my, um, than my sky. So maybe I do a little bit more of a horizon line up and through there. Of course, it's a little bit tipped, but that's all right. Sometimes that happens when you're slipping. <laughs> I'm gonna bring this over here. All right, that straightened it out a little bit. Um, so now I'm just gonna continue to go into my white, blue, brown, maybe a little bit of green. I'm going to want this to be lighter up at the top, so I'm using more white. And I'm just going left to right at this point. Um, I will incorporate a little bit of uh, shadow by this, or not shadow, but reflection by the land, but I'm going to do that later. Right now I'm just concentrating on getting a base coat for this water in here right now. And as I come down again, I want it to be a little bit more vibrant. So I'm starting to use less white and more of the other colors. I definitely want to use that brown and green because that's going to make it really natural looking at this point. And it's darkest to me down, or most vibrant down in the bottom right hand corner. So that's where I'm going to utilize more of the, the green, brown, and blue to give it nice and dark down here. And you can see I'm kind of skipping around my canvas a little bit here. And because you're doing the water and there's movement in the water, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth going across. You can even at times do, you know, like more of diagonal marks. If you're seeing um, the, the ripples of the water going diagonally, you can certainly do that. But again, right now I'm using a pretty good amount of paint so that way I can cover this large area in kind of a, on a kind of a quicker fashion here. But those browns in there are really going to make it look nice and natural along with the green. And again, you could make this 
as have as much movement in it as you want it to, or you can make it nice and placid and smooth. Uh, so that's really a, a nice um, decision that you could make on your own based on what you visually like. So you can have rough, rough ocean water, or you can have a nice, gentle, calm, flat um, look to it. And I'm just finishing up right here at this moment. Um, I'm going to kind of give it one last glance over, make sure I've got it the way that I want it. Maybe get a little bit more filled in over here. And I'm just, the paint is still wet so it allows me to kind of go back and make sure that I've gotten all those areas covered. Just want it a little bit lighter up in through here. And then I am going to be using um, that medium brush for the next, well, the number six round brush for the next step. So after you get your water done, you can put your big brush away in your water cup and you'll take out that number six brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing for the next step is finishing up those uh, back hills or back mountains. Um, I'm using my number six brush. I probably, I might uh, use my smaller one too to get some little details in there, but I'm gonna predominantly be using this brush here. Um, it would help if I had my palette in my hand. Hold on. <laughs> That's an important piece. <laughs> um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just, looking off in the distance, seeing what kind of little minimal detail I can put to accomplish um, a, a semi-realistic look here. So I've just got a little bit of white on my brush and I've seen some little buildings on this one. So I'm just gonna be kind of dotting it with some white. Maybe I'm gonna come in with this rust color. I'm not enjoying my brush right now, so I might actually switch brushes here. Um, and I'm just really incorporating some colors to make this look a little bit more natural. Um, this is something that's going to be far off in the distance. Um, and now I'm using yellow and white. Far off in the distance, maybe the, you know it looks like there's a little some little buildings up at the top of this one. There's some little buildings in through here. So I'm really just trying to incorporate some colors. I'll be putting um, some sh the where the land meets the water. I'll be doing that in a minute. Um, but right now I'm just kind of get, trying to get some of these characteristics onto these hills. So this one right here looks like there might be some kind of road coming down here. That's really bright yellow for me. So I'm going to put some browns and white and maybe speckle this in, in through here. And again, I'm just kind of looking off in that distance and seeing what kind of details can I incorporate. I see that there's some lightness down at the bottom up here. It's not, again, this is a beginner level, not meant to look like a photorealistic painting here. Um, there's some little ledges, it looks like, over here. So I'm going to incorporate those. Maybe a little bit darker over on this side. And again, you can see I'm just kind of dotting these in through here. I'm not really making um, exact details. I just want to get some, some kind of um, characteristics incorporated in through here. So if, so if you are looking for some identifying marks, you can say, oh, okay, that's one of the hills, and then this is another one of the hills. Um, and then on this one, I know that I've got a whole bunch of, this is looks like a whole bunch of trees and stuff in through here, so I'm going to just kind of dot this. Looks like there's almost like a, a, another ridge line, so I'm going to be using my browns and my whites and incorporating some kind of ridge line in through here. Maybe another one. There's some, there's a whole bunch of little buildings 
So again, I'm not going full on detail here. This is just to kind of give you a sense of we're in the right place. Um, looks like there might be some some more buildings up and through there. I want to kind of dull this down so it doesn't look so um, in your face. So I just added a little bit of green to my brush. And there's all kinds of roads and trees and all kinds of different information out there that the naked eye might not catch all of it. Some of it will. Sometimes you can take your a photo of it and use that as reference later as well. But right now for this quick, you know, beginner level painting, I'm just kind of getting this information, you know, getting a good second coat on this whole thing, getting a little bit of information back here. Um, I am going to use the same brush to um, get some of the shoreline in through here. So I'm using uh, the black paint and this is going to give me a little bit of the shoreline here in through here. I'm going to switch brushes to my smaller brush for a second here so I can get almost like the, a beachy or um, a real firm area that looks like the shoreline. Not so much on this one. This one really looks like it's off in the distance, so I'm going to just kind of do this to, to these ones in through here. And this gives you the visual effect of it being the shoreline as opposed to just, you know, a mountain going into the water. If you can, if you can have that light area next to the dark area, that's going to give you a visual effect. Uh, maybe I make this a little bit darker in through here. And I can just add some extra little shadows, maybe above the, the water line, or above the beachy area. Stepping back to see if it looks the way I want it to look. And I'm pretty alright with that. I mean, again, this is not meant to look like a, a photo here, just getting some information on here so it looks like it's off in the distance. I've got myself the water line here. I'm going to pick up my big brush just for a second here. I want to soften this in through here. So this big brush is just going to allow me to get these two to connect just a little bit more. Maybe it'll look like there's a little bit of water kind of rolling into them. And then I am going to use um, my larger round brush for the next step. So after you're done with this, you can put whatever brushes are in your hand, you can put them in your water cup and take out your um, number eight round brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing next is I'm going to be putting we're working on the palm tree in front here. I'm using my larger round brush. I'm going to be using a combination of many colors here. Um, but I'm going to start with yellow and rust and it, to put the, the stems of the palm fronds into place. And this is going to, in essence, give me like a road map of what I want to do. My, I'm going to be having the center of the um, palm tree somewhere in through here. So. I'm going to just have uh, rust and yellow on my brush. One of my tricks is to, if I want a pointy brush, is to spin it in my paint as, I, um, as I'm gathering that paint. And I'm just going to kind of give this a thought here for a second. If this is going to be my center where they're all going to kind of come out of. I want this big one. Just kind of giving myself a, a road map here, so bear with me as I, as I kind of get them on here. And again, I'm just kind of getting a basic shape. I don't want it to be too uniform, so definitely some of them are going to be longer than others. Some of, them, some of them are going to have more character than others. The reason why I'm using the um, 
the rust and the yellow is because that's what I'm seeing as a, as that stem. It's got that vibrancy in it. So because I see it, that's what I use. And then you can certainly do whatever, you know, additional ones that you want. And once I have that main the main area on there. I am going to wash and dry this brush. So that's going to be the stems to the palm prom. So then you can wash and dry the same brush for the next step. Okay, so the next thing I'm doing is I'm putting like the leaves on the, on the stems. So I'm going to be using uh, the larger round brush. I'm going to be using green, black, yellow, um, maybe a little bit of the rust, but I'm going to start with uh, green and black just so I can kind of get the, the information that I want in there. And so I'm going to do this kind of in a quicker fashion because that's what's going to make it more realistic for me. And I continue to uh, kind of change directions as I'm as I'm doing this because I'm seeing that they that they change directions on their own so I want to make sure that I emulate that within this. So again I'm using kind of green and black at the moment. Sometimes it's easier if you do those back ones first um, so then you can put the the front ones on top. So if you so if you can see some back ones, you can certainly do those. Like this one back here, these two are back ones to me, so I'm going to put those ones on. And I like to try and follow the direction of those, of the little leaves. That's what's going to make it look the most natural. And if you, if you paint oh, on top of um, another stem, so be it. You can bring that forward in a little while. And of course, I'm watching, I'm watching what I'm seeing out there. So if I see that these are coming forward, I'm bringing them forward. I can always, later we, we can add like little bright tips on top of them. Um, but right now I'm just kind of getting these um, the information on here so it looks pretty natural and again I'm, I'm kind of skipping around here just as I see it I do use a lot of paint on my brush so I'm going to reload quite frequently And I'm, I'm just watching where those where those leaves are headed so I'm not going to be painting every single um, branch that I see out there because we'd be here probably for four days if I was going to do that um, so I'm just kind of painting some of the the more major ones that I'm seeing and I can re-identify those the um, the stems in a little bit, but right now I'm just kind of getting these uh, branches on here. And you can see I'm working through some of the wet paint, which works really nicely. And if you see that some of them are brighter than others, definitely go for it with more yellow, more white, This is a fun part of the painting because it you can really get it to come to life with with an aspect like this with one of these little details. And again, right now I'm just kind of getting these these leaves on there.
I want this one to kind of maybe come at me here. And again, it's okay if you go right on top of another one. Now I'm just going to kind of go through and maybe add a little bit of highlights onto it. It's all right, she said. It's all right. And again, you could get these to be as powerful as you wanted, as dark as you wanted, as bright as you wanted, whatever is visually appealing to you. As long as that end result makes you happy, <laughs> it's quite all right, whatever, whatever degree of intensity you want to take it to. Fill in that little spot in through there. Just kind of get a little bit more filled in in through here. Maybe get some nice bright tips up in through here. I'm using some yellow and white to get these bright tips on here. And it really helps to show that sunshine poking through. And right now I'm just kind of improv a little bit to make it the way that I want it to look. Um, I know that I've got that visual, beautiful visual reference in front of me. But the, fact, the wonderful thing about painting is you get to use your creative license and kind of get things to look the way that you want them to. And that's really what I'm doing right now. I'm putting a whole bunch of sunshine on the tips of these. Maybe some of them stay a little bit darker so it looks like they're in the background. I still have those little hints of the stems that are showing through there, which I really like. Maybe we've got a little bit of grassy stuff coming in through here. I'm really not going to do a whole lot more. I am going to kind of come through one last pass um, with my with my small brush. So when you're done with getting the majority of those on there, you can put your uh, larger round brush in your water cup and take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so I've chosen to use my smallest round brush for this next step to get just a little bit more detail in through my palm fronds. Um, and that's going to include putting little tiny pointy tips, maybe um, re-identifying some of the, the stems. So I've got my small brush. Uh, right now I'm going to be using white, green, and yellow. And I'm really just going to kind of maybe re-identify some of this in through here just so it gives kind of that authenticity to it um, I and I really like how it's when I'm looking off at the actual land um, the actual plant that I'm, I like what I see in these um, in the stems kind of poking through so that's really what I'm doing right now and then I'm going to add a little bit of this brightness to some of the tips here. Even if you just use a little white or something. It 
it just punches it up just a little bit. Another little level. Gives it that extra special dimension to it. And sometimes you can't accomplish these uh, these little details with the bigger brushes, so that's why I've chosen to utilize the, the, the smaller brush to get these on here. Even if like I just want to go into some black to this is where I you know can uh, tweak it, do the little shadows or make it look a little bit more realistic. I've got shadows coming in from the, the horizon right now so it's kind of get these on here before I lose my visual reference here. We got some good music in the back to listen to. <laughs> And then um, I'm going to be using this small brush for the last step of the painting, and it's the last step of any painting. So after you get these little details on here and you're happy with the way it is forming here, you'll put this, um, you'll wash and dry this tiny little brush for the, oh, hold on. I'm almost done, I'm almost done. It's really hard to stop. That's my biggest problem is knowing when to stop. It, it could be your biggest problem too, but if that's the biggest problem of our lives, then we're doing good. So I just wanna fill these in just a little bit more. All right. Um, I can't stop. <laughs> All right. I'm stopping now. So you can wash and dry that small brush for the last step. Okay, so for the last step, I'm going to use my smallest brush. I'm going to use black paint. I, what you see me doing now is I'm just watering it down a little bit. I'm going to be doing my signature. You can um, use whatever color you want. Today I'm going to be using black. You can sign it in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going to sign or wherever you want, but that's where I typically sign it. I'm going to sign mine in the bottom left today. You can do your initials, you can do your first name, you could do the date. Whatever works for you is fine by me. And then that's going to do it for this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting. And I look forward to painting with you again sometime. Thanks for watching. Please join me as I paint and sip around the world.